Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 62 of the RV Man OP Exhibitions. Today we're playing Tekken Tag because for some reason the classic arcade mode of Tekken 5 doesn't work. But don't worry, Tekken 5 is indeed the next game after this. And for those of you who don't know what classic arcade mode is, classic arcade mode basically allows you to play Tekken's 1, 2, and 3. So what does that have to do with this game? Well, Tekken's 1, 2, and 3 characters are all together in this game. Sort of like a dream match. With the exception of one thing, there's no story. Excuse me. And there's a final boss who literally comes out of nowhere. Oh, and for the record, I kind of mistook the person Swy was copying for for Nightmare. So I was based off of Unknown, actually. That's the name of the boss. Unknown, not Nightmare. I might need to get my facts straight sometimes. Or all the time. Anywho. Now then. Let's begin Tekken Tag. Seeing as how this is just like Neo Geo Battle Coliseum, I'm going to play Arcade Mode. Well, with the exception there is only one final boss. Anywho. The rules are simple. You have two to a team. Unless it's tag battle, you... Any one of your teammates get KO'd, the whole team lose. The same applies for the computer. So, as you can see, we're taking on Bruce Irving and Nina. Two characters which I am not good with. However, I'm kicking ass with two characters I am good with. Haha, take that. Yeah, these are kind of two-round fights here. I should have set them to one-round fights to make it faster. But, also, you can tag in characters with the tag button. And you can also do some awesome attacks, too, depending on what type of team you have. Like, for instance, if I would have picked Heihachi instead of Hurl Wrong, Heihachi and Jin would have did a... Nasty little combination move. The same thing with Nina and Adam Williams and so forth and so forth. Round one. And it doesn't matter what team you make, the combinations can be endless. That is if you know how to actually pull them off. One thing is for sure. Tekken Tag was one of the toughest arcade games I have ever played for the Tekken universe. 4 was even easier than Tekken Tag. And there's only one reason why. The tag teams. I mean, a combat is fluid, don't get me wrong. But depending on the character, they could be probably the most broken team out of the whole entire game, or the worst team in the entire game. It makes no difference. And it also depends on how skilled the player is. When it comes down to the computer, however, it makes no difference. The computer tries to select the best team to put against you. And trust me, they can be a pain or they can be easy to mow through. Like for instance, King and Gordo. These guys are really tough characters to deal with. And they're both in a team together. Aside from King's brutal strength, we have the cheapest character in the game on any team. <laughs> yeah, the cheapest character in the game on any team is just a bad combination against the opponent, so. You ever run into Gordo, you better beat him quickly. Or at least beat his partner into a bloody pulp before he tags. I can't believe I missed that hurt, that uppercut, man. I can't believe I missed it. It's no big deal. I managed to win anyway. Just... Don't... I really don't care about Eddie so long as Eddie's not brought in. The moment Eddie's brought in, all hell will break loose. Oh, and just for the record, folks... 
then you tag out a partner, just like Neo Geo Battle Coliseum, the red, the red part of the gauges always regenerate. Actually, that may prove to be a bane of your existence, especially when the final boss is concerned. Trust me, I will cross that bridge when I get there. But I do believe there is also the parry system that has been introduced in this game. As a matter of fact, I was introduced to this game by a couple of friends of mine back in New Orleans. But I'm glad that I got my. <laughs> but I'm glad I was able to play it. Sorry for that stuttering moment there, I just was trying to think, because all the nostalgia is just coming at one time, and it's just, it's just making me get too excited, and it's making me happy that I'm actually playing this game for this channel. Anyway, well, that and the Chang sisters are right there. You know, they're also favorite characters of mine, too. Got him! Oh, and for the record, also, Warong and Jin were also labeled broken characters as well. Especially Jin, due to Tekken 3. Yet both of them got their butts handed to him like that. Well, Harong is, anyway. And let's just make a brief history of this one. The two characters I'm playing are not really the best of friends. As a matter of fact, it's because of Warong. No, not Warong. It's because of Jin. Sorry. Jin made Warong draw for the first time in his life, as he was constantly undefeated. So now, Jin and Warong are bitter rivals, and every time they meet, Warong wants to avenge his honor. And it's so desperately true in Tekken 5 and 4. I mean, he makes it a point to remind Jin that he's going to one day kick his ass. And so, we ran into Forest Law, which, of course, he's another great character that I like playing with, as well as Kunimitsu, which I haven't actually played with. I never played with Kunimitsu, because I normally play with Yoshimitsu, seeing as how Kunimitsu is in the same... was in the same area as Yotsumitsu, and was a secret character in Tekken Tag. No, not... yeah, yeah, in Tekken Tag and in Tekken 3, I just had to think about it for a second. If you notice, I didn't get all the characters because of the fact that I, well... haven't played this game in a while. And I make space for new games for my PS2. But I still kept the data for Tekken 5. Yeah, notice how quickly they switch out. See? Yep, the unblockable tackles are also in this game too, so... Use them whenever you can! She's done. Oh, great. Sorry, Jen. Looks like I'm gonna have to beat your mom. Round one. Fight. Oh, and that noise in the background? That's the monks fighting. Oh, Christ. Get in, get in. Oh, yeah. God Ryu is from Tekken 1 also. Wow, Jun Kazama was in Tekken's 1 and 2. And I almost beat Gonryu, until that is... You know, I'm gonna get that move off eventually. Or maybe not. Jun was in Tekken, uh... 1 and 2, and she ends up getting killed off in 3. I do believe Ogan, Ogre decapitated her or something like that. Oh, yeah, and Ogre's in this game, too. Not as a boss, but as a playable character. Yeah, 
yeah, the computer is starting to wise up now. And soon I'm going to win. See? Told ya. That just leaves only, well, maybe two more fights. Well, look at here. Master and grandfather versus student and, well, grandson. Big's pretty cool. He may not be as fast as Fro Wong, but he's still, still pretty powerful. And if you see the two in a team, it's pretty much like fighting the same character except for big stylus more of power and speed. And Ho Rong is more speed than power. But that guy can deliver some devastating kicks. And how funny that uh Ho Rong actually was a renegade student of Bayx. And the only reason why he that was any only other reason, sorry, that he joined the Tekken tournament was not only to beat Jin, but the finest master who also was killed by Ogre. So yeah, Ogre killed off a lot of people. And speaking of final bosses, now we run into Unknown. You remember I told you the red part of this, of your meter will haunt you at the end of the game? Here's why. Every time Unknown hits you, she takes away the red section of your health, so you won't be able to heal. And if the werewolf attacks you, I do believe it's instant kill. I think it's a rare occasion that the werewolf does. And it also... Yeah, I think that's one of the moves the werewolf was an instant kill. The other portion, I do believe... The werewolf will also steal some of your health and return it to unknown. But so long as there's red section and unknown's meter, unknown will just regenerate it. That's pretty cheap. That boss right there gave me a lot of problems. But now that she's been defeated, game over. And what we get? A collection of me kicking ass and taking aims. So my final thoughts on Tekken Tag. Arguably one of the best Tekkens that I've ever played. I hear Tekken 6 is just as good, if not better. And also Tekken Tag 2 is better too, that's from what I hear. I haven't played the game so I wouldn't know. But yeah, this is basically a great game for memory lane. And for Tekken fans everywhere. You can just make up whatever combo you want. And if you're good with a certain character, or two certain characters, then, well, you're good to go. So long as you don't pick Dr. Bosconovich, because he's on this game. God forbid if you pick Dr. Bosconovich. Anyway. I haven't played this in a while. And even after I haven't played this in, like, maybe a year or two, I still know how, to, how things work, and I still can beat the game like it's clockwork. Because if you're used to Tekken, you're basically going to beat this like no problem. I spent a lot of quarters at the machines on this game alone. As a matter of fact, I spent a lot of quarters on Tekken 3 as well. And I mean a lot of quarters. But nonetheless, people... Thank you all for supporting me all this time. I'm going to still keep the episodes going. The only reason why this one was late, it's due to the fact that now I'm starting to get a, new, a more busier schedule, a more hectic schedule. I mean, I'm starting to work, and my work is going to now cut into uh, most of my recordings like it did in 2011. Well, 2010, actually. But nonetheless, I'm glad that I managed to get this played and get this out the way. 
because it was fun to play as my two favorite characters in this whole entire game just to stomp the crap out of people like old times. Oh, you think that there's an ending sequence? Yes, there is. As you can see, Jin's about to put his father out of his misery. But does it? And then he realized what he was doing and then he stops. You know what? I'm gonna put that guy out of his misery. For everything he put Jin and his mother through, I would put Kazuya out of his misery. Then again, it wasn't really Kazuya's fault, it was his father's fault for throwing him off of a damn cliff. Seriously, what the hell was his father thinking? Nonetheless, thank you everybody for watching the RV Man LP Exhibitions. And as I said, the next game on the list will be Tekken 5. And I also have to be careful as well, because I have at least three copyright notices for the games I play. And that's the messed up part. I play them under for fair use. Still, YouTube still acknowledges them as third party content. I mean, I acknowledge them, that's no problem. But they'll still put a flag on my video for the fact that that's a video game. And it's not even monetized, that's the messed up part about it. I didn't even monetize these videos. And they still, for some reason, put a copyright flag over them. Oh well. What can I say? But, nonetheless, we will deal with Tekken 5, depending on how much copyright horrors they are. This is Harvey Man 985 see you guys next time. Sorry for the late upload.